Hello, this is Shankar Reddy, lecturer in political science from Government Junior College for Girls, Marit Pandi, Sikandrabad. In previous class, we covered up to four causes for the birth of Indian national movement. They are British colonial rule, socio-cultural renaissance, the great revolt, English education. In this class, we will try to cover remaining causes for the birth of Indian national movement. Here, fifth cause of the Indian national movement is that economic exploitation. So before going to discuss about economic exploitation, once we have to discuss about economic system of India before the Britishers. So before entry of the Britishers into India, the Indian economic system is self-sufficient self-realized. We have rich in natural resources. So that's why Britishers attracted towards India for the purpose of trade. They continued around 200 years in India. Here the British rulers transformed India into a colony and exploited our economy to their advantage. Here what is mean by colony? Here colony is nothing but the one place or country which treated as supplier of the raw material at the same time considered as market which produced the abroad country. So here they, the Britishers they took away our raw material from India to run their industries. At the same time they dumped all the finished goods into Indian market. Due to this one, we lost our resources at the same time we lost our market of the native goods. That means entire the in Indian market filled with the British goods only. Immediately the native goods unable to compete with the foreign goods. So here the Andy crafts at the same time cottage industry those who are believed, those who are lived on the cottage industries at the handicraft profession, they lost their employment. They lost their income sources due to the economic exploitation of the Britishers. At the same time, Britishers encouraged commercialization of agriculture. That means, be, before the Britishers, Indian people followed uh, conventional agriculture system. Whereas instead of the conventional ag agriculture system, Britishers encouraged commercialization of agriculture system. Then automatically the peasants who followed the conventional agriculture methods, they lost their employment. So that is why that is also one of the aspect in economic exploitation point of view. Here these all things are explained by Dada by Naurozi as drain of wealth. So he proposed drain theory along with R.C. Dutt. He wrote the famous book that was Poverty and Un-British Rule in India. Dada by Naurozi, the grand old man of India, wrote Poverty and Un-British Rule in India. In his famous book, he mentioned about drain theory, how the Britishers drain are exported our natural resources to the England. So he clearly explained at the time this was the very inspirational thing. So many people are attracted towards Indian national movement regarding to the based on the drain theory. At the same time in the year 1854 to 1901 India faced 24 famines. Around 24 famines India faced in between 1854 to 1901. So these famines leads to poverty and unemployment. That's why people of India realized and attracted towards Indian national movement because of they expected what about self-rule, the rule which is by ourselves. So instead of the British colonial rule, they promoted self-rule ideology. So at the same time, the Britishers introduced modern means of transport system and communication system like uh, telephone, telegraph, postal, 
railway system, road transport system. They introduced these modern means of transport system for the purpose of exporting our raw material to the England and also dumping the British goods into the Indian market. Due to all these things, Indian people are realized Britishers drain our resources. That's why we should aware about these all things then fight against the Britishers. That's why they finally attracted towards the national movement and participated in the Indian national movement voluntarily. So this is also one of the reason for the birth of Indian national movement. Then the next one is that famines and acute poverty. Here famines and acute poverty also considered as one of the cause for the birth of Indian national movement. Because in during the British colonial rule, India experienced so many famines, especially during the 19th century between 1854 to 1901, India faced 24 famines. So you know that if the famines or natural calamities are happened, the government should respond. Here the British government did not respond, did not take any initiative and they did not implement any famine relief programs but they collected taxes with forcible manner. That's why Indian people are realized and attracted towards Indian national movement for formulating self-rule. So these famines and acute poverty leads to poverty, unemployment in India. Have a look at the picture here, how the people are suffered, how the people are felt hungry at the time. That's why the people who felt poverty, the people who lost their employment, they attracted towards Indian national movement. They voluntarily participated in Indian national movement. So here famines and acute poverty also promote the uh, feelings of nationality. Then the next one is that press. Press also played prominent role in Indian national movement. That's why press also considered as one of the reason for the rise of Indian national movement. So here many newspapers, dailies and journals played crucial role in spreading nationalistic feelings among the people of India. At the same time, they attracted towards the national movement. For example, here I mentioned some of the important newspapers which are published by eminent personalities at that time. So Bengal Gazette, which is the first and the foremost newspaper which are published in India, which is published by James Augustus Hickey in the year 1779. The next one is that Amrit Bazar Patrika. This was published by Sisir Kumar Ghosh in the year 1868. The Hindu paper published by G.S. Iyer, Veera Raghavachari and others in the year 1878. Kesari Maratha papers published by Balagangadhar Tilak. You know that Mahatma Gandhi also published some of the newspapers. Here Young India published in the year 1919. Navajivan published in the year 1929. Harijan published in the year 1931. These are the papers which are published by eminent personality in India. Regarding to the Andhra point of view, Andhra region, one paper was published in the year 1906 that is Andhra Patrika which is published by Kasi Nadin Nageswar Rao and which is edited by Mutnuri Krishna Rao. These papers are published for the purpose of spreading nationalistic feelings in India. So they mentioned, they published articles against the British colonial rule for making self-rule, liberty, equality, justice. That's why people are attracted towards Indian national movement. In these papers, they questioned against the British activities, British cruel policies. That's why people are realized and attracted towards Indian national movement. So this is also considered as one of the 
reason for the birth of Indian national movement. Then the next one, repressive rule. Repressive rule also considered as one of the cause for the birth of Indian national movement. Here, during the British colonial rule, the Britishers ruled India in an unfailed manner by implementing draconian laws such as Rowlet Act, the Arms Act, Seditious Act, Vernacular Press Act, etc. What are these acts? So for controlling the Indian activities or Indian freedom or the freedom of speech or freedom of press at the time, they implemented, they formulated some cruel activities, cruel laws such as Rowlet Act, Arms Act, Seditious Act, etc. etc. Here, let us try to understand what are the main concept of the following acts. One is Sedition Act which is passed in the year 1870 for dealing with revolution and dissent against the colonial rule. That means if any Indian make revolt against the British colonial rule, they under punished Sedition Act of 1870. That means they, the, this is one preventive act which controlled revolutions, which controlled dissent against the British colonial rule. Like this, the Arms Act 1878. This is also one cruel activity which regulating the manufacture, sale, possession and carry of firearms. Here, Indians are not allowed to manufacture, sale, possess and carry the firearms. Who allowed to carry the firearms? Britishers only. So that's why for preventing the revolt, revolutions or revolt, they prevented firstly the manufacturing, selling, possess and carrying the firearms. That's why they formulated the Arms Act 1878. The Vernacular Press Act. Vernacular Press Act 1878. This was formulated by Lord Lytton, Governor General of India at that time. For restricting Indian newspapers. That means they formulated Vernacular Press Act for preventing Indian freedom of press. That means they restricted Indian newspapers. The Indian newspapers did not publish any news, any articles against the British colonial rule. If they published against the British colonial rule, they under punished vernacular press acts 1878. Finally, Rowlet Act. This is the very very cruel act. This act also called as the Anarchial and Revolutionary Crimes Act. This was passed in the year 1919 by Rowlet. That's why it was called as Rowlet Act. For what purpose it was formulated? For preventing indefinite detention. Preventive indefinite detention. So by this act, the Britishers has the full of right to arrest without any warranty, without any prayer intimation. Indefinitely they arrest anybody with the single doubt. That was Rowlet Act 1919. You know very well Jalian Walla Bagh was happened due to the Rowlet Act. Like this, the Britishers formulated so many laws during the period of British colonial rule. The people who affected by these acts, the people who realized these acts are unfair, they attracted towards British colonial rule. That's why repressive rule also considered as one of the cause for the birth of Indian national movement. Then the next one is that racial discrimination. Racial discrimination also considered as one of the cause for the birth of Indian national movement. During the British colonial rule, the British government exhibited racial discrimination against Indians in the matters of judicial process entry into civil services and providing rights to the people. So they formulated so many bills, so many laws for promoting racial discrimination. Here for example, Elbert Bill 1883. 
Lord Ripon formulated Elbert Bill 1883 for making judicial equality. That means equal justice to all the people, whether they are Indians or Britishers. Here, this act was not accepted by the Britishers because of racial discrimination. Because according to the Elbert Bill, whether the judges are belonging to the India side or European side, they have the right to judicial trial whether judicial trial to the Indians as well as Europeans that means here the Indian judges also allowed to the judicial trial to the European community according to the Elbert bill because before the Elbert bill no Indians are allowed to judicial trial to the English people that means no Indian judges allowed to judge European community that's why Lord Ripon formulated Elbert Bill for providing equal justice to all the people. Whereas here European community in India vehemently opposed or criticized to the face judicial trial with the Indian judges. They opposed this Elbert Bill. They are not accepted about judicial trial with Indian judges. This is also one of the cruel activity it is undercomes racial discrimination and the diarchy system 1919 government of india act 1919 formulated you know very well in this act they introduced diarchy system what is the diarchy diarchy system is nothing but dual government entire the executive powers classified into two categories one is reserved subjects another one is transformed subjects the duels under the dual system the executive powers classified into how many types two types one is re reserved subjects reserved subjects are nothing but the subjects are, which are very important and income oriented and less responsible they enjoyed the british ministers that means on the reserved powers on the reserved subject british ministers enjoyed the power the second category of the powers are nothing but transformed subjects. These transformed subjects are second grade subjects, secondary grade important subjects. These are less income oriented, more responsible oriented. These are under controlled by Indian ministers. It is also unfailed one. It is also racial discrimination. At the same time, Theory of white man's burden. They introduced theory of white man's burden. Here what is the theory of white man's burden? According to the British philosophy, the gods sent the Britishers to uncivilized people be became civilized one. That means the uncivilized people transferred as civilized by Britishers only. It is the Britishers responsibility to form uncivilized as civilized one so this theory also they introduced because racial discrimination so they treated indians or black people uncivilized people the uncivilized people wanted to civilize it with the help of britishers only it is the philosophy of theory of white man's burden at the same time they introduced providential rule what is the providential rule is that the rule which is justify their rule and administration which is also one of the theory the theory which is justify whatever their rule whatever their administration is perfect that is providential rule these all things are considered as racial discrimination so the people of india affected racial discrimination during the period of British colonial rule. That's why they attracted, they realized towards Indian national movement for formulating self-rule. So this is also one of the reason for the birth of Indian national movement. Finally, apart from the other, apart from the above causes, there are some other causes. They are in addition to the above factors, the number of other events contributed for the growth of nationalism in India, more particularly revolutionary struggles, 
for freedom in different countries so here apart from the other apart from the above causes the other causes also considered as treated as causes for the birth of indian national movement they also spread the nationalism in india especially different nationalistic feelings different revolutionary activities in abroad like gadar party which is san francisco and also england like this in india also you know that bhagat singh rajguru sukhdev at the same time the activities of the indian national army under controlled by subhash chandra bose they also spreaded nationalistic feeling so by the effects of the revolutionary activities also so many indians are attracted towards indian national movement so these are the causes for the birth of indian national movement here entire the indian national movement led by one organization that was indian national congress so here we should mention the emergence of indian national congress without the indian national congress we never we unable to imagine indian national movement so that's why we have to discuss something about indian national movement here the indian national movement is the landmark of indian Na indian national congress is the landmark of indian national movement in indian history which is established in the year 1885 by a o hume retired civil servant in india so here they conducted first session on december 28th of 1885 at bombay sir gokul das tejpal sanskrit college which is chaired by wc benerji this first session attended 72 members from the india side that means from the all corners of india the 72 members attended to the first session of the indian national congress here then next year december 28 they conducted second session every year like this december 28 they conducted sessions in different places and they discussed about the grievances of india and they concluded some of the resolutions and they forwarded to the britishers so these are the considered as causes for the birth of indian national movement without the indian national congress we never imagine indian national movement here have a look at the questions important questions from this part one is explain the causes for the birth of indian national movement as s1 if they asked like this you have to mention the entire the causes for the birth of indian national movement that means the nine causes or eight causes for the birth of indian national movement you have to mention as 10 marks one with a small introduction and also you have to conclude with two or more lines and then the next one is that most most of the times they ask it as five marks one like this explain any four causes for the birth of indian national movement as short answer or five marks one when they ask like this you have to choose any four of them any four of them with a small introduction so these are the questions regarding to the causes for the birth of indian national movement thank you everyone